versions of DIY LC do have nicer looking uh, models for the resistors. Um, and I'm a designer, and I like the nicer look. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I uh, should save it, and open this up in um, DIY LC 3.36. We've opened this up in a newer version that you can see has the nice rounded resistors. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, so before, after. So we can go ahead and close that. And from here, it's really just exporting. So go up to File, uh, Export as PNG, or to PNG, and we'll call this ROG Uno. And then to get the, um, the outline perspective over here, we go up to Configure, Outline Mode, and that gives us the outline of the components on the circuit boards. Uh, and we'll go again up to export to PNG and we'll just call this X and save it. So from here, a um, couple of things you can do in DIY LC real quick before we move on. You can, this button down here gives you the selection size. So if you just select the board, you can see that this PCB is going to be 2.1 inches by 1.8 inches which is a good fit in a 1590B um, as long as uh, these don't the pots here don't get um, don't get in the way of or pushing the board down in, in the way of the jacks that you need on the sides if you do side mount jacks so now we're going to switch over to Photoshop we're going to open the PNG files that we exported out of DIYLC and we're going to open them in Photoshop. Um, the reason we have that X version is for the outline mode, which we're going to zoom in, use the select tool, select the board, and click and drag it over to the other one. And then just place that over the over the existing one. So now we have the outline mode and the normal mode in the same image. And we are going to flatten the image, which the command uh, the keyboard shortcut is Command Shift E on a Mac. It's probably Control Shift E on a PC. Um, the other reason I switched to exporting not out of um, 3.28 but to a uh, newer version 3.36 uh, is because they changed the labeling oops they changed the labeling on the perf board instead of being letters and letters like it was on the old versions it's now letters and numbers so if someone has a problem they can say hey at D3 it's kind of like Battleship D3 something's messed up you know they can give a coordinate a little better then D C, which would be confusing if you, you could be here or here or here, or whatever. You get what I'm saying. So going back into Photoshop, here is where we uh, flip our underside for the perf, which comes in handy. Um, we just select the pads. Don't select the whole board, or we would uh, also flip the, the numbers and letters. Um, so we just transform that to negative 100 in the width, and then deselect. And so now, that's all backwards. From up here, zoom out so you can see that. Cool. 
Now, um, we're going to move into the circuit board, or the printed circuit board, because this is still technically a circuit board. We're going to select everything inside of the ground uh, perimeter. Now we have this, so we're just going to add with our select tool, hold down shift and add add the selection and group that in. Then we hold down alt to deselect um, some of this ground, some of these ground points that we don't want in our uh, the rest of the traces. You can also use the lasso tool um, if you feel like just freehanding it. But I really prefer the marquee tool. All right, move that, select that. Might as well select that. And just get all the little, um, all the pads that connect to the thin wire. That's why we uh, marked the, or made the ground traces so thin, so it's easier to distinguish, hey, this is a ground trace, uh, or ground connection. And this is when lasso comes in handy. Cool, I think that's all of them. Yeah, now, before we move on, make sure that these two colors are the default, black on top, white in the back. And the reason being, so what we're gonna do next is layer via cut. So that makes uh, these full traces their own layer and the ground traces separate. So we can turn off that layer. And that way we can also double check we got everything. There's no thin lines that are going nowhere to no other pads. So everything looks good now, and what that by keeping this back color white, what you cut out from this image stays white, and not another color. <clears throat> so what we'll do, we'll take the magic wand, and select between the traces on that top layer on the uh, the layer we just cut out, and delete that white space. I keep my tolerance pretty low. Um, and then we'll deselect that, and we'll hide the background image. Everything looks pretty good. Um, from here, we will bring up the layer style, double click on the layer, and over in the layer panel for that. And we're going to go to stroke. I do a six pixel stroke on the outside, normal blend mode, full opacity, and it's a white stroke, okay? Um, what that does is we'll hide the background layer is it gives an isolation to all this all the black traces so when we um, turn the background layer back on um, you'll see that 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 stroke has covered a little bit of some of the ground pads uh, now what we do is we then um, rasterize uh, that top layer that we just stroked or put a stroke on um, you do that by right clicking on the layer and hit rasterize layer style now we can go in on the bottom layer, use the magic wand again, select the ground traces or pads and etc. All you know, do the marching ant line around it. Select the top layer again and just hit delete and that'll clear out uh, a little bit of that stroke. 
if you can see right here. Um, how it just clears that up so that it gives a, enough space for soldering uh, things to this pad. Um, then we go to the bat, the bottom layer, the background layer, and select all the white space. So it's all of this, right? Then we come up to here to select and modify and expand that selection by one pixel. Then we fill it, hit Shift F5, we'll bring up your fill, and foreground color is black, and that's what we want. And there's our ground plane. And let's re-enable the top layer, and there you go. Now we've got some spaces in between that we could leave. You could leave in, it would be fine. It would probably etch just fine. Um, I go in and fill those with, uh, with white. Um, just so there's a little more, um, a little more differentiation between, um, between the traces that are all grouped together, and it gives you less chance of a short, I guess. I just like the way it looks. So we can select that with the magic wand. Um, yeah, it looks like most of it. And we again go up to select, modify, expand by one pixel. And now we'll flip our colors over here. You hit X and that will f make the top one white and the black one, the back one black. And bring up fill again, shift F5, foreground color, which is white. All right, and deselect. Uh, now we can come in with the pencil tool. I set it at like five pixels and zoom in and just fill in any things that we missed with the magic wand <clears throat> or that the um, that the fill didn't completely get um, here we this goes really nowhere so we can fill that in And at this point, it's uh, pretty much MS Paint. <laughs> um, just clean it up as you see fit. This is kind of a, I'm not sure how much time this saves me over adding those little fills in uh, DOILC. But I do like the look of this a lot better than the old ones, the old board style. Mm -hmm.